Hello friends and welcome into the Cowboys Report. Once again, I am your host Tom Downey. We're going to break down all the latest news and rumors around the Dallas Cowboys coming out of training camp and we're going to start things off with some roster moves that have been made. First up, Justin Phillips is back with the Dallas Cowboys. He was part of their initial undrafted free agency class, but he was cut after OTAs. The Cowboys have injuries at linebacker. They also cut Andrew Dole out of Michigan State because he's banged up right now. We'll get to Sean Lee later on. In the end, they needed bodies. The team knows Phillips, so that makes sense. Now, to make room for Justin Phillips, as Cowboys fans everywhere let out a cry in agony, Larry Allen Jr. has been released. Of course, yes, that is the son of Cowboys great Larry Allen. Cowboys have plenty of depth on the offensive line. Before you all freak out, I'm just going to say, I tried to warn you. When we brought up the undrafted free agency players, my third note on screen was, let's set realistic expectations. Because, guys, if Larry Allen was good because of his name, he would have been drafted. I'm sorry, I feel bad for the kid. At least he made it with the Cowboys, got the jersey. That's kind of a big deal. And, of course, he went to Harvard. He's pretty much okay long term. I'll make note, by the way, shout out who I have not seen yet in the comments section, Illegal Alien, uh, who said he is. He said that he thought the Cowboys would keep Larry Allen no matter what and challenge my job status on it. Tough break there, champ. Now, the Cowboys also worked out a couple of other players before they signed Justin Phillips. Jake Fisher, who is now a tight end, was with the Bengals, then converted from offensive line to the Bills, and it just didn't work out. He was caught kind of quickly there. Emmanuel Beal, the Oklahoma kid, was also worked out. And then Jerome Washington, all those players made it there. By the way, those of you asking about practice squad for Larry Allen, no. Pr players who make the practice squad make it through camp, plain and simple. All right, guys, make sure you are subscribed. I want to get to 30K before week one of the Cowboys preseason. It does not count the Hall of Fame game tonight. I'm going to get there before week one of the preseason, about a week away, a little bit of, of extra days in there. So let's get to 30K. I think we'll get to 29 today, but I want to get to 30. That's the next goal here, and then we'll up it to 50K after that. Some more news here, and stop me if you've heard this phrase before. Sean Lee is hurt. Every single year, it's the unfortunate reality. The Cowboys have to enact bubble wrap protocol pretty early for Sean Lee this year because he's dealing with a sprained MCL in his right knee. And the Cowboys called it minor and claimed they weren't worried about it. But here's the thing. A, a sprained knee doesn't sound like that minor. I'm sure it is a in terms of like versus a tear. Of course, it's minor. But Sean Lee gets hurt literally every single year. He's never healthy. He's always banged up or coming off an injury or about to be injured again. So I don't know how you can just flat out not be concerned for a player who, when he's on the field, is great, but he's never on the field because of those injuries. So without Sean Lee and without Andrew Dole has been cut by the team, that also came across the water today, putting the Cowboys at 89 players on their roster. Here's what the, the depth chart looks like right now. Joe Thomas got work as the starting strong side linebacker. Chris Covington just came off the NFI list there. Of course, the starting strong side linebacker isn't that important because he'll play like 25 at most snaps per game on defense there. Jalen and LVE, both freak athletes, both in their prime and really not even maybe to their prime quite yet. They're going to play the vast majority of your snaps. Sean Lee's last four years, just look at the games played. 7, 11, 15, 14. When he's on the field, he's been incredible. The problem is, it's been impossible to trust Sean Lee to stay on the field. So here's my question for you. Shout out, I, forgot, I missed who it was in the comment section. But someone asked uh, over under on how many games Sean Lee will play this year. We'd already planned this one. How many games will Lee play in 2019 for the Dallas Cowboys? Let me know in the comment section. Historically speaking, the over under should be set at about 9.5. That's about his career averages. So how many games? The man says eight. NMC's Tub says five. Lots of eights coming in there. Anthony says five. Andres says eight. Raul says 14. Optimistic there. I'll make note, nobody has said 16. I suppose that makes sense. Let's move now to Zeke Elliott because, of course, we have to talk about Zeke Elliott. Report from Jane Slater is despite other reports, the Cowboys and Zeke are not close at this time and there are a variety of things holding things up. The guarantee, the length, the actual money. They're just not close right now. I will make note, though, as to what is close is that August 6th deadline. That's coming up pretty quickly here. Otherwise, Ezekiel Elliott will lose a year 
in terms of accruing a year for free agency. Now, again, the previous report was that the Cowboys don't like the structure of the Todd Gurley deal. And the Cowboys want to reset the market for backs. We'll talk more about markets here in a little bit for the Dallas Cowboys. What that likely means is that Dallas wants to lower the guarantees of a Zeke Elliott contract because of A, the off the field stuff, and B, the nature of running backs in the NFL. That's why you've got Zeke and Gordon holding out. They aren't paid very much. Todd Gurley leads the way at 14.4 million. Le'Veon Bell, 13.1. DJ makes 13, then a pretty massive drop-off all the way down to 8.3 with Devonta Freeman. Guess what? David Johnson, Todd Gurley, Devonta Freeman, LaShawn McCoy. They've all faced injury issues over the past year or two. And, and Bell sat out an entire season. That's kind of a big deal there for the Dallas Cowboys, and that's why running backs hold out. They want to get paid because they have a short time for them to do it, but NFL teams are like, wait, no, why would we pay you? Because you're replaceable relative to other positions. Now, speaking of markets here, Stephen Jones has chimed in. And unlike the wildly taken out of context Jerry Jones comment, the Stephen Jones comment about not being a market setter, I think is far more impactful. A, Stephen Jones is in charge of this negotiation. Here's what he said. We can't push the issue unless we want to be a market setter. And we're damn sure not going to be a market setter because of all the things that go with being a Dallas Cowboy. We want our players to feel good about their contracts. But at the same time, we don't want to do things that are out of line because we can't afford to be that way. So when we save money, whether it's with Dak, it's with Zeke, or Amari, it's not Jerry and I saving a dollar. It's just money going to another player. Two things I want to mention here. First off, this is very clearly in reference to Zeke, because Dak and Amari probably aren't going to be market setters anyway. Steven Zeke Elliott, though, in theory should be a market setter because he's the best back in the NFL. Secondly, Steven's not all that wrong. <laughs> like In general, you don't want to be a market setter because that means you're paying top dollar for a player. And when it comes back to Todd Gurley and how that deal was structured, I think Steven Jones wants to avoid a situation where, yeah, Zeke's been healthy, what if he gets hurt? That's a fair question. And the Todd Gurley contract bump up the years by one, if you want to compare it to this year. Can't get rid of him in year one. Can't do it in year two. Can't do it in year three. You can maybe do it in year four, but that's only saving you under five million. All of a sudden, if you extend Zeke right now, you're locking yourself into four years of probably 300 to 350 touches. That's a lot. You can get out of it after, after year five, but is that what the Cowboys really want to do? So here's my question for you. Is should the Dallas Cowboys, when it comes to contracts, be a market setter? Type Y for yes or type N for no. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section. I feel pretty confident that almost all of you are going to type in N. So let me know in the comments Y for yes and for no. Destroyer Dog just says yes though, by the way. So shout out them but almost everyone else typing in, and I'll put it like 80% there on that front. Let's stick with our theme of market setting here. That is Michael Thomas. His contract details widely reported as a five-year, $100 million deal. Yeah, not really, though. It is, in reality, a five-year, $96.25 million deal, which equates to $19.25 million per year. It can get to $100 million. And, of course, Thomas' agent wanted it to be reported as a $100 million deal. But in order to get to that figure, there are incentives as well attached in years, uh, in years 2022 and 2023. 100 passes, 1,400 yards, 12 touchdowns, and make the playoffs. Those are all incentives. If Thomas doesn't get those, he's not going to get $100 million. By the way, those are viewed as unlikely to be earned. Therefore, as of right now, they don't count as a as a current contract detail but how does this impact Amari Cooper that's the big thing here right as I've said about 18 times on this show Cooper was waiting he was in no rush he wanted to see what Julio Jones got wanted to see what Michael Thomas and others got by waiting Cooper's value did go up the Cowboys might claim otherwise and they looking at you Jerry Jones but that's the reality here and Cooper could very well become a top three highest paid wide receiver in the NFL. Michael Thomas now leads the way at $19.25 million. 
I assume you'll see Julio Jones come in around a similar price tag. Maybe a little bit less, maybe a little bit more even. Odell Beckham got 18. So from that perspective, Cooper is about to get paid. It's a matter of when. And from, from Cooper's perspective, and even the Cowboys too, the Cowboys got to deal with Zeke right now. And Cooper's like, cool, that's fine. I, I got no problem waiting on that front. So that I think will get done. Just might not be tomorrow or the next day or the day after that. Speaking of getting paid, my buddy's going to help you do that. Head over to chatsports.com slash cowboys and use promo code GOCOWBOYS for a 100% deposit bonus. If you put down 50 bucks, they're going to give you an extra 50 for free. Put down 100, they're going to give you 100 bucks for free. You're not going to find a better deal out there. Chatsports.com slash cowboys. Use that promo code GOCOWBOYS for a 100% deposit bonus. We'll stick with the receivers here. Of course, you guys know the big three, Cooper and Gallup and Cobb. There are, though, a couple that I want to mention, based on the reports coming out of training camp, have actually done pretty well lately. And there's a common theme among them. First up, John Vay Johnson. And by the way, the common theme, they're all fast. And it makes sense because if you're a receiver, training camp sets up best for you when you're fast. Because there's not that many pads, there's not that much contact, you just tend to thrive a little bit more, and if the quarterback takes a sack, it's fine, it's not your fault, because they're not really taking sacks there. So Johnson's look pretty good. So too as the other undrafted free agent, Jalen Guyton, who also brings you speed. Now both Guyton and Johnson have had drop issues in the past, and we saw Andy Jones have those, the last great undrafted free agent receiver that Cowboys fans got hyped about, and for decent reasons there. So we'll see how they fare come actual game time. And then, of course, Reggie Davis, who spent part of last year on the practice squad. My biggest concern is not his speed. It's that he's 170 pounds. That's, like, my size. He's like me, although in shape. That's the difference between me and Reggie Davis. And also, he's fast and good at football. So let's, hypothetically speaking, you have room for one player, which I think actually makes sense because I have a tough time seeing the Cowboys keeping multiple of these guys because they all fit the same role, the speed burn that the Cowboys, to be frank, do need. Who are you keeping? J for John Vay Johnson, G for Jalen Guyton, and D for Reggie Davis. Let me know in the comment section. I see one D from Raul. I see a lot of Gs and Js. That's not a surprise to me. I figured most of you guys would pick Johnson or Guyton. And I can call it now in terms of the votes. Johnson in the way. Also, someone put in K, and I have no idea who that is. Who's K in, in this scenario? I don't know who you guys are talking about there. So pick from those three letters up there on the screen. Let me know what you guys think in the comments section. One last note here from training camp. That is Xavier Woods impressing. His stock is on the rise. This is good and also expected. Now, if I'm sure many of you saw the highlight on Twitter from the other day of Xavier Woods jumping around and getting a pick six against Dak Prescott that really wasn't that much of an issue with Dak Prescott. And if you listen to Kellen Moore's interview, he made the comment of like, Kellen Moore low-key was excited about it because he took that as a sign of, oh yeah, here we go. Our, our guys are making plays. I mean, it's the scenario of defense stepped up. The one outcome that could go bad on this particular play happened. Now we know how to adjust and plan against it there. And great play by Xavier Woods. Hit his coverage, jumped the route. Perfect play. Credit goes to Woods. It's less of a, oh, God, Dak threw a pick six. It's more of a, that was a great play by Xavier Woods. So I'm not freaking out about Dak Prescott. I'm more impressed by the play there by Xavier Woods. So I think he is going to be a breakout player this year. I've got pretty high expectations for Xavier Woods this season. He is my top breakout player, but I want to hear from you guys. Who is your top breakout player this year? Let me know in the comments section. I'm going Xavier Woods. I will make note, though, there are plenty of other options out there. Who is your top breakout player? Let me know in the comments section. I'll give some shout-outs here as well. I see some Xavier Woods is in there. I see Tristan Hill. Rookies don't count. I, I do not allow rookies to count here as an option on that front. Tony Pollard, again, no, no first-year players, guys. Gallup, Cedric Wilson. I do like Michael Gallup in there. I think that makes a lot of sense for the Dallas Cowboys. I think that's a good fit there. Gallup is also a popular pick, so I think that all makes sense. All right, guys, make sure you are subscribed. Get us to 30K before week one of the NFL preseason. Not the Hall of Fame game time. I'm giving you guys more time there. 
but I want to get to 30k we got let me see the numbers watching live right now we got almost 500 watching live so if you haven't already make sure you are subscribed to us here on YouTube link is below but just the big red button if you're watching on YouTube Hey Cowboys fans, thanks for watching the Cowboys Report. If you haven't already, click right here to subscribe to our channel for all the best Cowboys coverage on the internet. That's news, rumors, highlights, mailbags, film studies, and a whole lot more. And I'm making your lives a little bit easier as well with the next Cowboys Report video right here.